welcome to this week's edition of Bringing Back the Smile here on Lear Media TV with myself, Dave Sheehan, High Performance Consultant and dedicated for over 25 years now to educating, motivating and hopefully inspiring people just like you to lead the best life you can have, to turn your dreams into reality, to be the best that you can be because we all have that potential. You've that potential, I've got that potential, everyone has this potential. It's a case of how you're living your life determines everything. The choices you make, the thought process you have in your head, the decisions you make, how you manage your emotional state, the actions importantly that you take, because they determine everything at the end of the day. You know, if you're not taking the right actions and things can't change. And, you know, when you want to improve your life, whether it be to add happiness, to bring back the smile, to bring back laughter, to achieve more success, to experience more fulfillment, it's all about taking action in your life. You know, making right decisions that serve you and serve you and your values and your beliefs, they're really important because you are, you are a specific person. You're a unique individual and it's important you're always true to you. And I've spoken about this in previous shows, how it's important to embrace your own uniqueness. It's important for you to truly be you. It's important for you to not care what other people think about you, what you say, what you do, because if it's all in line with your own values and beliefs and what the way you want to live your life, then cool, go do it. Knock yourself out. Don't let other people and other things stop you from being the true you. Because far too many people in the modern world, modern modern society, it's like clones, like everyone's the same. People are afraid to step outside their comfort zones. People are afraid to be different. When we're all different, every single one of us is different in one way or another. So it's important we embrace our difference and really put it out there and enjoy it and be who we are. Because again, if you're not who you are, you can't enjoy life. It's impossible. It's absolutely impossible. So that's, again, I want to start with that message to you. And it's a big part to bring back the smile because the other thing as well is if you're not truly being you, you can't be happy. And you may never be happy. You will never be happy because your own spirit, your own soul will cry out for you to embrace unique you. And when you don't embrace it, when you shy away from it, when you feel ashamed and embarrassed by who you are and you suppress it, you, you're suppressing your chance of happiness. It's just not possible. So start being you, start being the real you. Do you even know who the real you is? It's important you start to tune into it. So start to tune into who the real you is. Really look inside, go by your feelings, trust your gut. Your gut will never put you wrong. You know, it's, it's like a skill. It's your internal GPS. It's what will tell you what to do, where to do, where to do it, what to do, all this kind of stuff. Tune into it every time you have to make a decision especially the more important the decision is the more potentially life-changing it can be your gut is who you need to listen to not other people doesn't mean other people don't have a role sometimes but your gut is the one you need to listen to most so start tuning into your gut and that will make a huge impact on your life on this particular episode i'm going to do something that i did a i think it's about once definitely once not twice so far and it's been very popular and feedback been great it's where i take some of my morning motivation messages i post up every single day and um, I do that across social media, but I, I basically on this on an episode then talk through five of those messages. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk through the last five messages that I've put up and tell you what the message is. You'd see it on the screen, then explain it to you, give you a bit of teaching on it, and just kind of you know bring it out in a bit more detail. You know the feedback so far on when I've done this has been great. So I think every so often I'll do this. And this is one thing I want to stress to you: this is your show. Okay, this show is for you. It's not for me. It's not for their media. Of course, it's important to us. You know, it's really important to, to us. And we take huge pride in our work and what we do and what we put out there. But the show is for you. It's information for you. It's hopefully inspiration for you. It's edu education for you. So it's important you ask us what you want. Like contact the station directly or contact me directly. Tell me what kind of things you'd like to see on the show. What kind of topics, what kind of questions, what guests, what type of guests, all this kind of stuff because this is your show. And I started the show originally to bring back a smile. That's why it's called that. And I wanted to do that. You need to tell me what will help you. What can this show do? What can it you know, include that will help to bring back the smile for you? That will help to bring back the laughter. That will help to bring back the sense of happiness for you. It might just be that little spark that gives you that you know, urge to take that step that leads you on to happiness. It could be the turning point. That's how powerful little steps are. We totally undervalue and underestimate the power of small little steps that we can take. Yet the tiny little action will lead to something else, lead to something else, lead to something else, and it could end up being completely life-changing. 
So never underestimate the power of small little steps, okay? Right, so let's start going through this. So last five messages. Right, so the first one. So I'll, I'll say what it is first and I'll explain it, okay? And I'll, I'll do that then for each one. It's the best way I think of doing it. So first one is double down on your strengths, work on your weaknesses. Now, I put out these messages every morning because I hope that they, one, wake people up a bit to how they have you know, responsibility for where their life is and they can take control of it. Hoping as well that people are feeling a little bit down, a little unmotivated that these messages give a bit of a spark and get that person going in the day. Sometimes it's a bit of education. Sometimes it's a calling you out on something maybe you're doing or not doing and urging you to change your behavior, change your actions, change your thought process, because that's all it takes. Your life can literally change in a millisecond. It just depends on what you do. It depends on the actions you take, depends on your thought process. I speak so much about your mind and how your mind is a control tower, and that's exactly what it is. So it's really important for you to really get focused on, you know, how can I improve my mind? How can I improve my mindset? How can I, you know, make myself get in a better space where I make better decisions to serve me. So I'm saying here, double down on your strengths, work on your weaknesses. We live in a society where people are hammered over their weaknesses. We focus on people's weaknesses. We prey on people's weaknesses. You know, we love to see people fall down. We love to see people's weaknesses. It's horrendous, but that's the society we live in. People shy away from working on their weaknesses. They only work on their strengths. They only work on what they like. They only work on what they're familiar with. They only work on what they feel comfortable with. Now, while it's important to work in these areas, it's a huge mistake to neglect your weaknesses or what you perceive as being weak at. You may only, you may not be as weak as you think. It may always be an area you could thrive in if you just got it to a certain point. But, you know, when you look through the whole school system, look at work, look at university, look at life in general, you know, people are always hammered over their weaknesses. And also people are pushed harder and harder to improve in their weaknesses. And the focus is put so much on that when the reality is, you know, your weaknesses will likely always remain your weaknesses, but that doesn't mean you can't improve on them. Like you should be working on both your strengths and your weaknesses all the time, which means your strengths get stronger, your weaknesses also get stronger. Why ignore an area of your life? You know, why ignore things that you can potentially get better on? Because you can get better on everything. That's growth. We can all grow. If you're working and focusing on your strengths, of course, it's going to have a certain result. And it's going to have a very positive impact on your life. But also, at the same time, if you work on your weaknesses, that's going to have a positive result too, because the things you're weak on will start to improve. Okay? So like I say here, double down on your strengths, work on your weaknesses. Double down because really focus on your strengths. It's like this is the thing again with, especially school, college, work, the whole system. When you're not, when you're perceived as not being good at something, you're pushed more and more to get good at it. I'll always use the example of maths, for example. Or let's go the opposite, creativity, stuff like art. And someone isn't good or perceived not good at it. Typically, teachers hammer them, hammer them, hammer them about getting good at it. They're not working hard enough. They need to do better. They're not concentrating. They need to do more time. They need to get some help. But the reality is that particular kid just doesn't have a mathematical brain. That particular kid just isn't creative. And that's why, you know, isn't good at art. So, you know, we are all unique, we're all different. Like I said at the very start, we need to embrace our uniqueness and we need to stop hammering ourselves and being hammered about things that are not us. So if someone's not good at maths, not good at maths. And I think with maths in particular and that type of brain function, you either have it or you don't. Same as creative. You can't become good at art. You're either good at it naturally or you're not. You can improve, like if someone's good at art, but not brilliant, they can get better, but they'll never be brilliant. Same as basketball, football, anything. You can be okay at something, but you'll never be brilliant, brilliant, unless you kind of have that knack in you. You can work damn hard and compensate for lack of talent in sport, but when it comes to academic stuff or creativity stuff, you're either good at it or you're not, and that's the way it is. So we need to stop hammering ourselves over. So what I want you to do is always identify what your strengths are and work on your strengths. At the same time, identify what your weaknesses are and be okay with them and put time into them. That's why I say work on the weaknesses. Don't neglect them. As I said, in too many situations, in everything, sport, life, school, the whole lot, the weaknesses get to focus, get better what you're bad at. But the reality is, work on what you're good at massively, and then also work on what you're bad at, and bring it up, okay? So double down on your strengths, work on your weaknesses.
that's that one. Right, next one. Here's a question for you. So each day, do you expect to win, hope to win, expect to lose? So each day, do you expect to win, hope to win, or expect to lose? Okay, again, it comes down to mindset. Like everything I speak to you about is, and like everything in life is, it's all about mindset. So if you're a type of person who, in the first option, was expects to win, what do you think is going to happen more often than that? You're going to win, right? Because whatever energy you're putting out there is what typically comes back. It doesn't mean all the time. It doesn't happen all the time. If I expect to win all the time, it doesn't mean I'll always win, but it means that I will win more often than not. And I will have much more success, much more fulfillment, fulfillment and most importantly, happiness. Also, what it will importantly mean is when I'm hit with obstacles and challenges, which inevitably will happen in life, because my expectation to win, I will just find a solution to that obstacle or challenge. And I will get over it, through it, under it, over it, around it, whatever has to be done because I expect to win and nothing's going to stop me from winning. So I will leave no stone unturned in achieving my goal and objective, whatever that may be in whatever area of my life that may be. Okay. So when you expect to win, you will win. Okay. And if you don't win, you will learn from that and you will go on and win in something else. That's the difference in the mindset. This is what you need to work towards. Okay. And expecting to win is not arrogance. Some people it may come across arrogance. Sometimes it might be arrogance, but a lot of them it's confidence. It's like for me, I expect to win in everything I do. If I decide to do something, anything at all in my life, I expect to win. I expect to do it and achieve it. That's because I'm confident in me. I believe in me and I understand the way that things work. When you put out the right energy, it comes back. If you truly believe in your mind that it will become a reality. Also, everything is inevitable if you put into work if you keep taking the steps that are required to get to a final destination you have to get there the only way you can't get there is if you don't take the steps and if you sit in your ass and do nothing or if you start going backwards if you take the required steps one by one by one by one to a certain destination you will get there it's 100 inevitable second option was hope to win hope is is a good thing in some way ways but in terms of with your life it's not going to be a good thing because when you live in hope of things changing, it means that you're only doing things half-assed. You're not really given every, given anything, everything you've got because you're practically hoping that it will improve. You were using the word try a lot. I try this. I try that. I tried this and that. Try literally is just, it's like in your subconscious, ticking the box because at least you showed the intention you wanted to make a change or you showed the intention you were going to take a certain action or change a certain behavior. But more, more likely, you won't have done that. You won't have actually changed it. And that's why you use the word try, because it constantly ticks the box. But in reality, nothing's improved. But you feel good in yourself because you tried. Same as hope. It seems the lotto mentality I speak of. The people have a lotto mentality where they spend a few quid in the lotto, hoping that they'll win, because if they win, supposedly, it's going to change your life forever. Will it? Most likely not. Because when you haven't got the right mindset around money and about that sudden change in your life, you're not prepared for it. And you will use it for the wrong reasons and it will destroy your life. So when you're in a situation where you're expecting or you're hoping to win, more often than not, you won't win. doesn't mean you never win, but more often than not, you won't because your mindset's all wrong, your thought process all wrong, the, the energy you're putting out there is all wrong. Third one, expect to lose. What's going to happen if you expect to lose? 99 times 100, you're going to lose. Why? Because again, the energy you're putting out is wrong. You're expecting to lose. How can you win if you expect to lose? It's a reverse of what I said with the first one, expect to win. If you expect to win, you're putting out good energy, expecting to win. If you're expecting to lose, you're putting out the wrong energy, expecting to lose. When you expect bad things to happen, bad things simply will happen. When you expect you know, bad, a certain area of your life to go bad or remain bad or get worse, typically they will because you're attracting that into your life. We are energy. We're putting out energy all the time. Is your energy you're putting out good or bad? That will determine what comes back to you. Because that's literally how it works. It's as simple as that. This is why your mindset's so key. The way you speak, the words you use, what you say, the thought process, the intentions you put out there, you, they need to be positive. They need to be self-serving. When they're not, you're attracting the wrong things into your life. So each day, do you expect to win, expect to uh, hope to win, expect to win, hope to win, or expect to lose? Important question. Change, what, move up the ladder. If you're the third one or the second one, if you're at the first one, stay there. Keep working hard and stay there. My third one. Slay fear of what might happen with excitement for what could happen. Slay fear of what might happen with excitement for what could happen. Okay? Goes back to negative emotions. Far too many people live their life in fear. Like most people are literally just existing. That's all they're doing. They're not living. 
your existence and what you do right now. You know, how many risks, perceived risks, I'd say, because most of them are not risks, have you taken in your life? How, how many times have you got outside your comfort zone? How many times have you taken steps towards your dreams? How many times have you ignored other people telling you to not go for your dreams because they were crazy dreams that never happened and it's, you're not the right person, it's all luck, all this type of crap that people say. How many times have you done that? That shows that you let fear win. You let other people's words beat you by letting their fear or their supposed concern or their negative emotions, negative energy, stop you from doing what you wanted. So you're letting fear win. So when you've ever had big decisions to make, you know, do you take the safe option or do you pick what was supposed to be the risky option? Like the thing about the risky option that people perceive it as, as being risky, it's not risky. Where you are right now is not making you happy. It's a mediocre existence. Otherwise, you wouldn't be looking to improve in it. So when you go and take the perceived risk, that's not risky. The risk is actually staying where you are and not taking the action because you're risking staying where you are. That's a far bigger risk than taking an action that would potentially improve on your life. Surely that's not a risk. How is that a risk? You should every single day be trying to improve in your life. Every single day take an action that will improve in your life. So focus on that. Focus on how you can improve in your life. Okay. And this is why I'm saying be excited about what could happen. Why are we why does most of society always think, oh, but what if this happens? Or oh, that might happen? How about thinking about what might happen in a positive sense instead of a negative sense? How about seeing what will happen again in a positive sense instead of a negative sense? How not how about focusing on the results and the end outcome being what you want it to be, as opposed to what it maybe won't, won't become and will be disappointing and frustrating and embarrassing and all these different things. Focus on what you want. Go for it. Stop worrying about it not happening. There's no reason. You're usually the only person that can stop it happening in most situations, because if it's a properly thought out goal, if you've got proper action steps outlined, then all that's going to happen is you take the right action, you're going to get there. It's as simple as that. Okay, it's as simple as that. So I want you to slay fear. So slay, you need to destroy fear. Remember, fear is false evidence appearing real. Destroy, slay fear with what might, or of, I'm sorry, let me say it again. Slay fear of what might happen, and the point where there is might, because there's no guarantee it's going to happen, with excitement for what could happen. Okay, and it could is strong because there's a good chance it will once you take the right action. Like I said a little while ago, if you have a destination you want to get to and you take the required action steps to get there, you will get there. And if you have obstacles along the way, you work out how to go around them. That's it. Simple as that. Okay. So slay fear of what might happen with excitement for what could happen. Next one. Let setbacks and disappointments keep the fire lit. So when we experience setbacks and disappointments in life, more often than not, people go down. They like going on the last point in terms of um, setting goals, letting fear win and so on. You know, they, they're afraid to take risks. They're afraid to, you know, go again. When the reality is you should go again. So if you did something, then you, you know, you're aiming for something and then you experience a setback and disappointment in achieving it and you're stopped in your tracks. What did you learn from that? Learn the lessons and then go again. You're basically going again in a stronger position, a wiser position, and you've increased your chances of success. Whereas what do most people do? They allow the setback and disappointment, stop them completely, and they don't go again. Now, where's the logic in this? Where is the logic in it? Always go again. Go again, go again, go again until you lose a passion for that particular goal or you get there. It's the only two times you should stop. So let setbacks and disappointments keep the fire lit. Let it drive you on even more. Let your desire for the final outcome far outweigh the setbacks and disappointments and the urge to stop and to not keep going. You know, you have to keep going. Life is not easy. Success is not easy. No, no positive experience, no goal, dream was ever achieved without a lot of hard work and a lot of obstacles being smashed. So it's not unusual to have these setbacks and disappointments. They're a necessity, really, because one day tests whether you truly want to continue that journey and get to that final destination. But also there are valuable learnings along the way, which actually make you stronger to go on further in the journey. So. Let setbacks and disappointments keep the fire lit. Keep that fire lit inside you. Keep that desire. Push on no matter what and go on and achieve those goals and have the life experience that you want. Next one and final one. Commit today to being good at something you're bad at. Goes back against the strengths and weaknesses that I said in the very first one. You know, how often do you do something that you're bad at and aim to get better at? It could be anything. You play the piano, the guitar, the flute, 
It could be learning a language. It could be doing a bit of DIY. It could be trying to fix something. It could be doing a dance. It could be anything, anything whatsoever. You know, what is it you're not good at? It could be doing accounts. You might hate accounts. I personally hate accounts and all that admin and paperwork and all that kind of stuff. I absolutely hate it. But something I'm always working on trying to improve, take out the word try to actually because I hate it and I've already told you what I think of it. But I'm always working on improving on things that I'm not good at because then I'll get better at them. I'll never be brilliant at them. I like accounts and admin and all that stuff. I don't like it. I hate it. I procrastinate on it, but I'm always getting better at it. That's all that matters. I'll never be brilliant at it. I just won't be. Doing things like videos and shows and live life broadcasts and things like that. I love them. So get nervous with them, no different than being on the show, but I love them. So I keep getting better at them. That's kind of more my strength, talking to camera. I enjoy that, talking to people directly. I enjoy it. So I keep looking how I can get better on that. So I'm good at that. I feel I'm good at it. I'm totally good at it. And I always look to improve on it. But things I'm bad at, I have to work on then as well. So again, like go back to the first one, strengths and weaknesses. If you work on the things that you're good at, you get better at them. If you work on things you're bad at, you get better at them too. So why not do that? But the thing is, we typically shy away from things we're bad at. We're perceived bad at or more often than not, we're told we're bad at, but we may not necessarily be that bad at it. So what I want you today is commit. Come in today to one thing you feel you're bad at and work and become good at it. Okay? And every day do a little bit. Like today, like tomorrow, like the next day, do a little bit. Okay? Day after day, and keep getting better at what you're bad at and become good at it. Turn that bad to good. Like I said, you may never be the best at it, you never be amazing at it, but you sure as hell can be good at it. Okay? And same with everything. All right? So commit today to being good at something you're bad at. So, five messages today. And I hope you've enjoyed them. Double down on your strengths, work on your weaknesses. Each day, do you. Expect to win, hope to win, expect to lose. Next one, slay fear of what might happen with excitement for what could happen. Next one, let setbacks and disappointments keep the fire lit. And finally, commit today to being good at something you're bad at. I'd love if you'd message me or the show directly and let us know or comment below the video wherever you're watching it and comment below what one thing you feel you're bad at are you going to commit to working on today to become good at? Put it below, put it below the video, you know, or send it to us directly. We'd love to hear it. And also it's accountability and it's commitment. And that is really important. And it will help you massively in your, in your goals and achievements. And I will hold you accountable as well. If I know what you're trying to do, I will hold you accountable. Don't worry about that. So I hope this has helped. All these kind of messages and working on your mindset every day is huge in terms of you know, bringing back the smile, feel better in yourself and ultimately working towards happiness. Remember, that's the end goal. It should be the end goal. It always should be the end goal in the busy, stress-induced, hamster wheel society we live in. Lots of people don't even stop to think about what to make them happy. And they're not happy, they're not even moving towards happiness in what they're doing. You need to stop, be clear in it and then take the action that will make you happy. It's all that matters in life. So work on things that make you happy, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Do let us know. Your feedback super important to us, as well as your suggestions. And please share the show out there far and wide. The more people who can listen to the show, the more people that will hopefully be positive, positively impacted. So um, get in touch with us. And um, look forward to speaking to you on the next episode of Bring Him Back to Smile.